I put $5,000 on red and it's like, bink, but a bink. I swear it hit red 21 for my 21st birthday. And we went nuts. Like everybody said, so now I'm drunk asshole. I'm like, let it, let it keep going. Let it keep going. Red. It's like, bink, but a bink, bink. Red. Uh, now I have $20,000 there. Whenever I have like an athlete on a podcast, I always ask like, oh, when you guys are going to a game or when you're flying, are you guys gambling and playing poker? And you grew up on the set. And, you know, you went from just teenager to like, you know, basically drinking and smoking and, and going out and partying all over the course of the taping of that show. So does that also mean that you learn how to play poker on the set? Like, were there, was there, were there, was there action uh, when you guys were filming? How did that go? So uh, we would, we played poker a couple of times, but nothing too crazy, like definitely just for fun. But then we, we, once I turned 21, I could go with them to appearances that they did in casinos. So we would go to those and just, man, talk about having a good time. Like it was just, it was, it was crazy. It was so much fun. Uh, and yeah, we would all go like these people would, I don't know what they were paying or, or if it was like, if you're a gold member at the casino, come meet the Sopranos. Like however they arranged it, they didn't tell us. They just said, Hey, we'll give you this money. If you come here and hang out for the night, we'll give you a room. I'm like, yeah, I'd probably be there anyway. You know? So why not? And, uh, we just show up. And then it's funny because these people would like wait in line for hours or whatever to meet us. And then two hours later, we would all be sitting at the blackjack table and they would walk up like, why did I wait for, <laughs> for two hours to, to meet you when now I'm sitting next to you playing blackjack? And we were like, hey, we, I, I didn't tell you to wait in line, you know? That's amazing. That's, that's absolutely hilarious. Um, what, what were some of the worst decisions you've made, you know, as, as a young kid with a paycheck and going to casinos? Because I can only imagine that was not a good combo. So when I turned 21, I uh, got, there's a club that's still in Vegas called Tau, where they flew out me and like 20 of my friends and threw a giant party and everything. And I had always said, I'm going to take $5,000. I'm going to put it on red right when we walk in. So we walk into the Venetian and I take five, and I'm wasted already from like the plane, you know? I put $5,000 on red and it's like, bink, but a bink. I swear it hit red 21 for my 21st birthday. And we went nuts. Like everybody said, so now I'm drunk asshole. I'm like, let it, let it keep going. Let it keep going. Red. It's like, bink, but a bink, bink. Red. Uh, now I have $20,000 there. And I'm like, my friends are like, yo, take, that was like the most money we'd ever seen in our lives. And my friends are like, yo, like grab the money, take it. I'm like, let it ride. I'm like, I want 40, you know, screaming everything. And it was literally like, bink, but a bink. It was like black too. <laughs> and she just took the 20,000 and it was, it was like being at a funeral. Right. It really, like the way that it changed and it was all so fast. And I saw her just, and then it's even worse because the $20,000 goes down that black hole in the table and you can't believe <laughs> what that you just lost twenty thousand dollars but after that i was um i was a pretty responsible gambler like i always made my max on my atm limit a thousand so if i was steaming or partying or whatever it's like the most i could lose is a thousand and uh yeah, nothing, nothing too crazy. When you when you first started coming to Vegas and you saw guys like Doyle and, and Ivy, either in passing or, or in the poker room, w was there also a little bit of fan inside of you? Like, holy shit, these guys are really here? A little bit. I mean, that was, it was insane. I remember we were in LA for, I think like the Emmy Awards or something. And we would all, everyone on Sopranos would stay in one hotel. So we'd get, you know, somebody would call somebody, somebody's room. Hey, we'll all meet at the pool at, you know, noon or whatever. And Jamie Lynn, her boyfriend at the time uh, was like, oh, I have a lunch meeting or whatever. And he went over to like the, the tables where you could sit and order food. And all of a sudden I see Doyle Brunson walk in and Doyle comes and sits down with him for his lunch meeting. And I'm like, this is fucking insane because we're at the hotel all sitting together like eating drinking, and people are like oh shit there's all the sopranos and i'm sitting with all the sopranos looking over at doyle like oh my god and doyle brunson is sitting over there. i mean just what because you know even though people might have like bigger names or bigger this even like phil helmuth he doesn't he is a presence but not the way doyle like doyle comes in you feel like you should bow you know what i mean like there's like uh like yes 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 sir like is there like 
I felt like, should I go like wait on him? Like, is it, did, did he not, why are they not filling up his water? You know, like it's very, where with Phil, it's like, you know, you, you want to tell him to go get your water, you know? <laughs> uh, I feel like I have to ask this, but did you, did you approach him? Did you say, Hey, Mr. Brunson? Well, he, my, Jamie's boyfriend came over to me and he's like, yo, come meet Doyle. And then like, I went over there and was talking to him and it was just like, you know what? It was actually really cool to meet him not in a poker room because it's a, there's a whole different vibe, you know, like the first time I, I've hung out with a Negranu a uh, bunch. And uh, the first time I met him was like in a poker room and there's that like, oh shit, like this is like talking to Derek Cheater while he's standing at the f- plate. Like the, this is, the, there's more of like, you're, you're kind of seeing yourself in the situation. Like, wow, this is pretty bizarre. And um, we're with like, just at a lunch table with Doyle, it was really like calm and you could, and just having a normal conversation was, it was incredible. As someone who's partied in Vegas a lot, you must have at least one Ivy story. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, you know, partied with Ivy at, at Tao definitely was, uh, was crazy, but I was just, you know, I, I was, I was like the star of my own music video for a few years there longer, you know, where I was just so like wrapped up in everything that was going on and then put me in Vegas on top of that. And this, where it was like, like, I think it would be crazier if I, if, if I saw Phil Ivy at like a bar in Manhattan, I would have this like Phil Ivy story where like, you're in Vegas, you're gambling, you're a party, there's girls, you're in a strip club, there's Phil Ivy. That like, it just becomes a, you know, a thing in, in the night where you're like, holy shit, man, this is, you know, this is pretty cool where, you know, yeah, Ivy's just, at, at that time, he was somebody where, you know, if they were like, oh, like to me, it's the same thing as being like Michael Jordan is, is at the table next to you, you know, it was like, holy shit, man, F- Phil Ivy's over there, it's pretty cool. <laughs> 